Hello kindergarten. So today we are going to work on the learning objective. We will create a creature using model magic. So you're going to get a small piece of model magic and you need to pull it in half. So you need to find the middle and pull and create two pieces. So I pulled and twisted to get two pieces. So the first piece is going to be your snail shell. So you're going to want to roll this out into an even coil. So I'm taking my flat hand and I'm rolling the coil back and forth from one end of the coil my hand goes to the other end. And as I roll, I'm pressing down. And this coil for the shell needs to be about the size of your pinky finger. So it's going to be a little bit thinner than the coil that we roll out for the body. Now you can see as I press down and I roll my hand from one end to the other, the coil gets longer, but it also gets skinnier. So you want to roll this out in a nice coil about the size of your pinky finger. And then you're going to take one end and you're going to bend it and you're going to spin and create a spiral. So I'm keeping this flat on the table and I'm just turning to create a spiral from the coil. And as I turn, I'm kind of pushing in just a little bit so that there's no holes or gaps in the spiral. We don't want to be able to see through the shell of your snail. And now that I'm at the end, I'm going to press this down just a little bit. I don't want to make it too flat. And there's no gaps or holes in my spiral, so this is really great. So I'm going to set that aside. And for the second piece, remember you got two, one piece that you tore in two pieces. So on your second piece, you're going to roll this out thicker, another coil, but thicker and shorter. So more like your pointer finger or your thumb thickness. So it's going to be thicker than this, not as thin. So you're going to roll this out the same way, a flat hand back and forth. You just won't roll it out to be as thin as before. So that's probably a really good thickness. So one end, I'm going to pinch and flatten, and this is going to be the tail of the snail. And then I'm going to take my shell, and here's the tail. I'm going to set my shell down on top of the snail, press down. So I'm taking the shell and pressing down, and then I'm going to bring the snail's body up around the shell. And then I bend the top of this forward for the head of my snail, just like that. And now I have a nice snail shape. And then the last thing you're going to do is you're going to bring it to me and we're going to get a pipe cleaner and you'll get to choose what color. And we're, I'm going to push this pipe cleaner through the head of your snail all the way through like this. And then you get to bend the pipe cleaner for the antennas of your snail any way that you want. I like to bend mine up and then make curly cues. You could do zigzags. You could just bend it up and they could your antennas could be straight. Just like this. Okay, so now that we have the antennas on, the antenna on, we're going to press this down on the table to make sure that it'll sit. So I'm pressing down and you can see it flattens out the bottom. Set this down, make sure it'll sit on the table. We don't want any falling over snails. So you have to press down and make the bottom, the bottom of your snail flat to sit on the table. And then we don't want our snail to get mixed up with anybody else's, so we need to get our name on our snail. So what you're going to get is a piece of masking tape. On the masking tape, you're going to take your pencil and you're going to write your name on the masking tape. So see how the masking tape is on my desk? It's flat so that I can write on the masking tape easily. You also write the day you have art. Then you're going to flip this, pull this off the table, flip it over, and have your snail sit right on top of your name, just like that. So that your name's on the bottom and your snail will sit up and stand up on the table. And you have a nice, beautiful creature. Good job, kindergarten. All right, so now when you get your snail back, it's going to be nice and dry. Um, it's not going to be mushy or be able to be moved or bent. If you bend it, it'll probably break. 
So you're gonna get your snail back, you're gonna pull off the masking tape with your name on it, and you're going to write your name with permanent marker on the bottom first. Also put the day you have art, day A, day B, day C, after your name. Then you're gonna put the marker away, put the cap on it nice and tight, and now you're gonna paint your snail. And you can paint your snail any way that you want, but we're gonna use watercolors. So I'm gonna show you how to use the watercolors properly. You're going to pick a color that you're gonna paint your snail and you're gonna put a puddle of water on top of that color. And the way that you do that is you dip your paintbrush in the water and then you pull the bristles across the edge of the oval and that pulls the water out of your paintbrush and into the oval. So you dip your paintbrush in the water, pull your paintbrush across the oval and you get a puddle of water on top of that color. And you're painting the water. So you're not trying to dig that paint out of there, you're painting the water. So you take your bristles, which is the hairy part of your paintbrush, you wiggle it around in the water, touching the paint that's underneath the water. Just wiggle gently. I'm not taking my paintbrush and digging it down in there. The gold handle of my paintbrush is not touching the paint. So just the bristles, and then you're going to paint your snail. Now it's three-dimensional, just like your airplane that you painted. So you have to paint all the sides of it. And since it's watercolor, see, it wants to run and drip down to the bottom. So you're gonna have to be careful when you paint and you'll just have to go slowly. So wherever it's gonna, seems like it wants to drip, just take your paintbrush and move that paint somewhere else. Turn your snail, get the underneath of your snail. And as long as you don't do a lot of paint, it won't drip too bad. And just make sure you get all the white spaces And like I said, you can paint your snail any way you want. I'm gonna paint my snail one color for the body and a different color for the shell. But you can paint it however you want. You can also paint your name. Now remember when we painted our airplanes, I said you couldn't paint your name, but we're using different kind of paint this time. And so it won't see it. This is why we have the placemat because it's wanting to drip. So you can flip it over and paint right over the top of your name because it's permanent marker and it'll show through this paint. But the other paint that we were using on the airplanes, it, it just wouldn't show through. Now, the top of my head's a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna go back and do another coat of blue to make it just a little bit darker. I could do an, a couple of different coverings of blue over and over again to keep making it a little bit darker and a little bit darker as the paint starts to dry but your, it's your preference. So my snail's body all the way around, and the underneath, the head, that's all painted. So I'm gonna switch colors. So now I need to rinse my paintbrush off and I'm gonna pick a new color for the shell. I think I'm gonna do yellow. So I'm gonna put a puddle of water on the yellow, dipping my paintbrush in the water, pulling it across the oval. I have a nice big, puddle of water on top of the yellow. So now I gently touch and wiggle my paintbrush in the water and gently touch the paint underneath the water to make the water turn yellow. And now I'm gonna paint my shell. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lay my snail down on one side and work on one side of the shell and then I'll work on the other. Now the spiral of my shell, it grabs and holds the paint in those little cracks that are made, the spiral shape. So it's gonna wanna drip. Now watercolor doesn't dry super fast. You have to give it a little bit of time to dry, but um, you can always use the antennas to pick it up too. All right, so my yellow has dripped onto my blue. On the side of my blue, the body here, you see how it's changed color because the um, yellow ran down and dripped. So I'm starting to get paint on my hands, which is okay. You'll have an apron on, you can wipe your hands off on your apron. But I'm gonna do a little touch up with the blue for the snail's body. So I'm gonna keep the snail standing up and I'm just gonna add some blue right here where that yellow kind of um, bled and covered up my blue. And if that happens to you, you can always go back and add that color a second time on top to try and darken it up. So when you're finished painting, your paintbrush will go in the bowl of water and you're gonna bring me your snail 
Um, you want to give it a little bit of time to dry. You don't want to be dripping it all the way across. So what might be a good idea is if you get a paper towel. So get a paper towel and then take your snail and set it on the paper towel and then bring it to me just like this in your hands in the paper towel. You can throw your masking tape away and we'll clean up the paint and the water basin and the placemats. So now we're going to create an environment for our snail and we're going to make a diorama just like we did for our memorial. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to fold your paper in half two times. So fold it in half one way and fold it in half the other way. Then write your name in this box and the day you have art. Day A, day B, day C. Then you're going to open it up and you want to make sure that your name is on the top half of your paper. And the top half of your paper, remember, is the sky. And you need to think about where snails live and where you want to put your snail. So snails can live by, they live by water, typically, and so they could live by a little creek or a little river. They could live in the ocean. They could live in an aquarium. They, um, it's completely up to you where you're going to put your snail, where you want your snail to live. I'm going to make my snail be in an aquarium, like um, with fish and stuff. So the bottom of it's going to be gravel. So I'm going to add just a bit of a wavy line across for gravel. And I'm going to add a treasure chest because it's underwater and sometimes aquariums have a treasure chest. And I'm going to add some fish swimming by. And then you're going to use a permanent marker to trace over your pencil lines. And you're going to erase any pencil lines that you have poking out. And you're going to pick one square at the bottom to be the ground. And so since mine's made of gravel, I'm going to add some circles for the gravel and the rocks at the bottom of the aquarium. All right, and then you're going to color it in with crayon. All right, so now you're going to put your diorama together. So the first thing you need to do is cut up the middle of your paper and stop right when you get to the middle. So you're gonna cut from the bottom center up and stop when you get in the very center of the overall paper. You're going to put a frame of glue on the square that you did no color on. So a frame of glue. All the way around the square, that's it, that's all you need. Close your glue bottle up nice and tight. And then you're going to lift up the ground and twist your paper. So you're lifting it up over the white square, twisting. And then you're gonna hold that down, get that to stay stuck. And if you made sure your name was on the top half of your paper, your name should still be there. So here is my diorama, and then you're gonna take your snail and place your snail right inside the diorama. So here is my finished diorama of an aquarium where my snail lives. Good job, Kinder.